welcome to what I hope is the first of many of these videos in which I hope to explain everything I know about everything, which is everything because I know everything. I learned it from a Tibetan monk in the Himalayas. In exchange for my soul. So, as this is hopefully popular science, unless it turns out to be unpopular science, but then, like, Darwin and Galileo and people, they did unpopular science. That would be quite good, actually. In fact, just hate me and don't take any notice of what I do. And then I get to be a famous scientist and get to go down in the history of science as the greatest person ever, like Darwin and Galileo. Anyway, as this is popular science, and popular science always has to mention Schrodinger's cat at some point, that that's a rule of popular science, I, I get it over with now. So, um, then explain some other cat physics. The most important point about physics, more important than the actual physics, point that physicists hate cats. They spend all their time devising ingenious ways to torture and kill them and experiment on them. So, Schrodinger's cat, you probably know about it if you're popular science people. The idea proposed by the renowned theoretical physicist and sex maniac Owen Schrödinger, where you get, to, to explain quantum mechanics, so you get a cat, put it in a box. You can't see inside the box. No way of observing anything in the box. In the box, you have a cat and a radioactive source, a go counter, and Schrödinger said it was a bottle of hydrogen cyanide. But when it's opened, it'll kill a cat instantly. So you've got... And the system is set up so that when the radioactive source decays at all, just emits... One, at one atom in it emits an alpha particle or a beta particle or whatever. And that goes into the Geiger counter. Geiger counter recognises that. And then opens the bottle of hydrogen cyanide, killing the cat. Now, in quantum mechanics, until something is observed, until a quantum particle is observed, it has all of the possible states. They exist in superpositions called. When you observe it, you collapse the waveform and it assumes one of them at random. So the decay of a the decay of a radioactive atom would be an example of that. So you've got the... So, the life, the life of the cat is tied to a quantum thing. And until you open the box, the atom has both decayed and not decayed because it hasn't been observed to have done either. So, the atom's decayed, the cat is dead. If it hasn't, the cat's alive. So the cat must be both alive and dead. Because this is silly because it's a cat. So, Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, which is one of the interpretations of quantum mechanics, debunks this by saying that the Geiger counter counts as an observer. It's fair enough. Geiger counter is an observer, therefore, as soon as the Geiger counter observes the nucleus, it, it's either decayed or not decayed, and the cat has a definite state. Now that's one way of solving it. The other idea is that there's the many worlds theory, where you've got the world, if, when you open the box and look at it, the universe splits into two separate universes, par two parallel universes. There's one where you've observed a dead cat and one where you've observed a live cat. 
in the one way you've observed a dead cat, the radio, the, the nucleus must have decayed. In the one way you've observed a live cat, it can't have decayed. It follows from this, though, that you're, you're observing, you're, you can cause events in the past, right? You cause events in the past. You open the box, see the cat's dead. You're causing the cat to have died in the past by observing that it must have died in the past. Strangely, quantum mechanics was invented before LSD. Maybe that's how they did it. You can cause events in the past, so they... So they smoked... You can cause events in the past, so the quantum mechanicians who invented quantum mechanics did LSD from the future and it made them invent quantum mechanics. Yeah, brings us on to another rather nice piece of cat quantum mechanics. The quantum Cheshire cat phenomenon. Named after the Cheshire cat in Alice in Wonderland who fate gradually fades away and the green is the last part remaining. How this works is a particle can be separated from its properties. We did an experiment on this and it happened. What happened was they put, they sent a neutron through some science machine, right? And it's, and they managed to separate its to make it spin, take a different route through the science machine than the neutron itself. So it went in. Then they used a technique called weak measurement, which is where you make a measurement too shit to actually count as a measurement for quantum mechanics, but it t still tells you enough you need to know. But it doesn't count as an observation for quantum purposes. So the things stay in superposition. So it turned out that the neutron had actually taken a different path through the machine to its spin. It had spin had ended up somewhere where the neutron was. It was some spin that wasn't attached to a neutron and a neutron without any spin. So they, they then, at the end, they reconverged them because otherwise it would be silly. You'd have some spin floating around in the universe. And it would, just some spin, and that would mess everything up. But now, back to classical mechanics and proper things that make sense. More cats. Throwing them out of windows this time, because that's, that's, that's a fun thing to do, because they're evil, and they are plotting to take over the world. So a cat, if you throw it out of a window, it'll, the higher up you threw it from, the more likely it is to survive after a certain height. Because, right, a cat has a non-fatal terminal velocity, because right, if, if a human jumped out of a window, if the window's high enough, the human will die, because a human's terminal velocity, a human is a, is a lot bigger and heavier than a cat. So, so it has a higher terminal velocity. Because terminal velocity works by you have the weight of the cat downwards and the drag on it upwards from the air. As well as a little bit of buoyant force, that doesn't really count because it's too small in air. If the cat's falling in water, that would matter. But humans would have a non-fatal terminal velocity in water. So that's, that's irrelevant. And you don't get buildings in water, so you do, but it's, it's got the weight acting downwards, and that makes it accelerate, whilst there's a resultant force downwards, because F equals MA equals Newton, because proper science. Uh, its weight makes, goes downwards, but as it accelerates, its drag, which is at least the viscous drag on it from the air, assuming that the cat is perfectly spherical, which they, they're not, but they should be, because that would be really funny. Assuming the cat is perfectly spherical, 
the viscous drag on it, according to Stokes' law, is equal to 6 times pi times its radius times the viscosity there times its velocity. So the viscous drag increases as the velocity increases, which means that force upward increases, force downward stays the same, because that's just its weight. And then they eventually balance out. So there's no resultant force, so it stops accelerating. It's its terminal velocity. For a cat, this is non-faithful, assuming it lands in the right position. The higher you throw it from, it's going to reach this, this speed and then stop go and then stop accelerating. If you throw it up from higher, it's just going to have more time as it falls to get into a good position to land. That's so why you should throw cats from lower down in buildings, then they're more likely to die. And then they're less likely to take over the world. Another thing, of course, you can do with cats by throwing them out of windows is if you stick a piece of buttered toast on their back and throw them out, it, it, it generates perpetual motion because toast always lands butt side down and cats always land on their feet and toast magic and cat magic balance out. It works. Well, the toast, toast bit works. It's been done. They got an Ig Nobel Prize for it. They actually tested it. Apparently, it's because Toast does usually land butt side down. Apparently it's because the height you're likely to be holding toast at and the average piece of toast, it's got time for one and a half rotations before it hits the ground. Apparently that's why. So if you throw a cat out of a window with butter toast on its back, generate perpetual motion, use it to power all the world forever and solve global warming. That's all. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>